Final match and Gonzalez will serve. Spot opposite Ferrero in the final. Improving in the Roddick backhand right away in the first point. Well, I think that's one of the keys to this match tonight, Chris, is Roddick's ability to open the court up with that backhand down the line. Get Gonzo on the run, hitting those backhands. the new variety there in Gonzalez's game is looking to come in and finish at the net but Roddick got that ball down and then a beautiful cross court pass. Love 30. there from Gonzalez. Sets himself up and if it took a funky bounce or what, but that gives Roddick triple break point. Gonzalez saves one. First game of the match here. Game. Today's Weaver 2000 keys to the perfect match. For Roddick, stay aggressive. Something we already talked about here in the opening game, Chris. Use the backhand down the line for Roddick and had to continue to attack the net. For Gonzalez, high first serve percentage, which he didn't do in that game. Use his variety with that backhand slice, but still he's got to remember who he is. Go big with the forehand when he can. Tough conditions tonight, by the way. Very humid, very hot. I can tell you from running up four flights of stairs just now, it's not going to be easy <laughs> in the players if this match goes goes long. No, it's not. But Roddick usually thrives in these kind of conditions. He likes the heat, gets him warmed up. He actually prefers to play in hotter conditions than in, in cold conditions. It's just such warm blood from growing up in, uh, in South Florida. Gonzalez is also a very fit guy, and he's yes. played some marathons in his career and found amazing reserves of stamina. 76% humidity. That's high. That's real high. But I mean, the good news is that the court's in total shade now. Obviously, it will start to get dark as this match goes on. 15. Such a factor in these Masters events where, unlike a major, you don't have rest day between matches. You have to come back on court every day. It's not best of five, but it's... I think in some ways more punishing. I think it is because, you know, also the competition is, is tough from round one on. You know, at a major, obviously early on, you could get a couple of easy wins. But here in these events, it's uh, very difficult from round one on. But 
But it's been an, a, certainly an advantage for Roddick that he's played now his fourth night match in a row. See that zero at the bottom of that graphic. No titles in 2006 for Roddick. Does not sit well. He will get his ranking back up in the top ten and win this match. He faced having that ranking drop outside the top 16 Patrick into the low teens if he'd been bounced early in this tournament a lot at stake for him and you know, the ranking drops seating is affected and yeah, we heard that from we heard yeah. that from Ferrero today we had some interesting comments after his win to get to the final and, you know when he got injured got the chicken pox face for Roddick his first and, you know when you drop down in the rankings all of a sudden you've got to play big players early on but a pretty easy draw though when you consider the, the depth in this field for Andy Roddick. Detail the moment against Bracciali when it appeared Roddick was in deep trouble. The reason I say, excuse me, Chris, the reason I say it's kind of easy because Murray, I felt, really came into that match at a disadvantage physically. Sure. I think he's a very tough player, but I thought he was about 60, 70 percent health wise with his endurance. Yeah, sure. You get to the semis of a Masters and you don't have to play a Federer, who obviously was in this quarter before. Or he took care of him, or a Nadal, or any other one of the top six or seven players in the world. And now Bandian went out early here. There's Coach Stefanki, Gonzalez's coach since just before the French Open. down. Uh oh. Moving gingerly as he checks out his ankle. Well, he's had trouble with his ankles in the past, so that's a concern for Roddick. So he's got, mm. they went over pretty good there. He's got both of them strapped up. It's the right ankle we'll keep an eye on. Meanwhile, Gonzalez has a break point to get back on serve in this set. Still chose to approach the net so the ankle doesn't seem to be bothering him at this point. It's a good sign for him to keep being aggressive. And you know, one of the things Gonzalez has been working on with Stefanki is obviously I talked about that variety using more of his shots but what that means for Gonzo is he's had to get fitter he's lost about 15 pounds in the last six months so he and you could already see Chris in this opening game on Roddick's serve that he's looking to play some defense whereas you know in the past the Gonzalez we knew was to go for broke just go big go big early go big often and uh, he's really added a lot to his game and I think that's why we're seeing the consistency in his results. Yeah. Roddick able to dig out but off the break point and hold for a two love lead. He's really begun to reap the rewards from working with Stefanki in this summer hardcore swing. He did employ him just before the French. They didn't have much time to work in anything, though, in the clay court season. And the fitness and the variety has begun to appear as he headed over to North America and enjoyed solid results. Now, he used to be a one shot guy, the huge forehand, and the crowd would ooh and ah because he'd clobber it bigger than anybody in the world. But when he was on, he could handle anybody, but it just wasn't often enough. Pam, you know Larry Stefanki very well. Uh, I've known Larry for years, and to me, he's one of the great tennis minds. Uh, talked to him for a few minutes before the match. I thought only for 30 seconds, but he kept going and going and going. He knows Gonzo needs to get a high percentage of first serves in, which I believe was one of Patrick's lever keys, the perfect match. He wants Gonzo to attack some, take the net away. They know Roddick's been coming in effectively to the net, better than he ever has before. Still, they feel Roddick is vulnerable to the high backhand. They want Gonzo to use the high kicker to the backhand of Roddick often. And they also don't want Gonzo to just rip for passing shots right away. Sometimes you've got to do a one-two combination pass up at net. Andy doesn't like to create from down low up at net. So make them work. Don't try and go for it all in one shot. And for heaven's sakes, when you get the one or two break points, make the most of it, because Roddick has been holding serve beautifully. 
Sounds like quite an elaborate conversation. Yeah, with Larry. Right. Well, Larry, Larry's a talker, but he, Matt Pam's right. He's a guy who really, he knows the X's and O's very well. And uh, he's a very good strategy guy, and he's a good motivator. You know what was great, though, Patrick, is that he has a lot to say, but it's never that complicated, and I feel like it's a very clear game plan. And as a player in a big match, that's what you want. You don't mind lots of details, but you don't want it all fuzzy. And Gonzalez holds, gets on the board here, but it's Andy Roddick with the early break on a steamy night north of Cincinnati. Metropolitan area, folks are out tonight, a capacity crowd, more than 10 grand in the place. And it'll be the same thing for the final tomorrow. They tell me, and I've never seen it, but it's kind of a society thing, Patrick. The, the women will wear the hats and the dresses and kind of do the mini Kentucky Derby or oh, Wimbledon. And all pumped up for the night matches, yeah, particularly on the weekend. And they were they were sold out for the final back in the beginning of the tournament. They'd already sold it out. So this uh, gets great support. Just a terrific event here in the Midwest. Roddick waiting for some latecomers to take their seats. Gonzalez has not exactly been reading the serve very well. He was frozen, didn't make a move on the 134 mile per hour delivery. 16 aces for Roddick. Last night's win over Murray. He's a tough guy to ace, Murray. Yep, I'll tell you, Gonzalez has one of the best forehands on the run. He's been doing that consistently this summer. And Roddick looks like he's got the advantage in this rally, but blasts the forehand cross court on the run. Be interested to see tonight if Roddick looks to serve and volley a little bit as he's been doing, uh, because especially up on Gonzalez's backhand side, if you can kick it up high there, he's basically looking to just chip that ball. Losing the 15 pounds, getting fitter for Gonzalez. No effect on the heaviness of the forehand. You don't think the, the no. power of the ground strokes the serve? Definitely not. Oh, no. There's Andy Roddick's parents, Jerry and Blanche. Big family reunion here. They've got a bunch of cousins that live nearby. So they all get together for this event every year. 129 up the middle. 40, 50. Dominant serving from Roddick, 3-1. Roddick, please. Wondered if he might you know, have that same energy and fire tonight. That match last night meant so much to him. Murray had gotten him twice, taken all five sets in the previous two meetings, obviously coached by Gilbert. So far tonight, more business-like for Monik, but it's, it's early. Yeah, well, also he and Gonzalez have played against each other a lot. I think they've been around. They know each other pretty well. 31 winners last night, 29 errors. But see, I don't mind when Roddick has a big number in the unforced errors as long as he's got a lot of winners. When he was playing uh, poorly and struggling, Chris, Oftentimes, I noticed that his numbers were low in matches. You know, he'd have eight winners, 12 unforced errors. I'd like to see him have, have big numbers, litter the stat sheet. They met on the grass of Queens. Roddick won that. Again, in the hard court meetings, which includes a win at the Olympics by Gonzalez in Athens, they're two and two in the hard court. Second ace for Gonzo. Now, one of their other meetings this year was in Davis Cup. Sure. And, um, it on was grass? On grass and out in California. And it was a very tough four set match. And Gonzalez had a very good chance to go up two sets to love in that match. Here's that backhand up the line. That's been one of the big points of emphasis that Jimmy Connors has wanted him to work on. If there's one guy who knew I'd hit the backhand down the line, it was Jimbo. 
And Roddick's been doing a much better job setting up, getting his weight into the shot. Even that time, he was a little off balance. He still hit it well. I think he's leaning his big body into that shot much better. Gonzo spraying some forehands here. He's thinking about a challenge, but that was definitely long. He cannot afford misses like that. If Roddick a second break, this set's over. That's not the steady, consistent style we've been seeing him play this summer. That's more the old Gonzo when he's off. He's come out a little rattled. And remember, he came out the same way last week against Federer. He lost the first set in about 20 minutes and made it a very tight match in three sets. Gets the ace to bring it back to Deuce. We talked about Murray and all the matches he's played, and that sort of caught, caught up to him against Roddick. Well, Gonzalez has played not the same amount of matches because he got to the semis last week as well in Canada. If you say as Randall, do you think that the possibility of clinching the U.S. Open Series title with a win tonight is, is a factor in his head? It's a lot of cash potentially, so that could be, yeah. That helps. A couple of aces. If you win the U.S. Open Series. <laughs> Points title, you can get matching prize money at the U.S. Open. And Federer was able to clean up last year. Help! Roddick down at fourth, but if he wins the title, he will win the Lever 2000 Challenge. Yeah, Roddick won it last year. Of course, uh, went out early at the U.S. Open, so he didn't get much of a bonus. Kim Kleisters right. won it and then won the Open and got double prize money. Fortunately, it looks like she's going to be out of the Open with a wrist injury, which is just terrible news. Hurt herself up at the event in Montreal this week. Evidently serious, and you have to wonder about the future of her career. Mm -hmm. That's how serious it apparently is. Once again, Roddick kind of off his heels, delivering a lot of power in that forehand. Well, that's, that is so true, Chris, but I'll tell you what set it up was another good backhand return, and that's been a weakness for Roddick, but he's getting something to hit on the forehand, and he's absolutely unloading. But the backhand's enabling him to get that shot to hit. We'll get a look at a second serve here on a break point to go up double break. But I just tried to change the pace once there with the forehand. I think that's what he's upset about. And that allowed Gonzalez to get on the offensive in the point. If you're going to change the pace, you've got to really get the ball deep and high. Otherwise, Gonzalez can step in and take control of the rally. And that's what happened there. Just changing the pace is not enough. You've got to change the pace with either depth or height or both, preferably. It wasn't even really a very good percentage as Roddick thinks about maybe challenging the call, decides against it. Not a very good percentage of points won on the first serve for Gonzo. Good thing he didn't waste the challenge. Yeah. The serve was good. And Gonzo has been serving at a high percentage, but also winning a high percentage of those first serve points, but that's not that high, 64%. And he gets a cheap one there. So, Gonzalez fights off a couple of break points, but it's still Roddick in front in this first set. Stadium in Mason, Ohio, a Western and Southern Financial Group tournament summary. Juan Carlos Ferrero is able to move through this afternoon, straight set, still hasn't dropped the set. He beat Robredo. Talked about Gonzo's consistency. The Bryans are really one of the stories in tennis this summer, backing up that Wimbledon title to complete the career slam where they run up now 21 straight wins. And you'll see Ferrero against the winner tonight, live, 1 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow in the final. It could be a 
replay the U.S. Open final if Roddick wins this match. That was the 2003 U.S. Open final. Roddick dismissing Ferrero in the championship. last year too, right? In this tournament, uh, did they? Yeah, I think did Ferrero. I think Roddick beat Roddick him barely. Beat him, yeah, it was yeah, two barely. tie breaks and then a, a six-two right. third set. That. I'm impressed, Chris. I was here calling the match. You weren't, and you still remember it before I do. And he's still waiting for uh, fans behind him in that section are taking their time to sit down. Gonzalez is going to challenge that. That did look to be long. The finger went up immediately. Fergus Murphy in the chair for this one. This has been a great great addition I think to the summer hardcore series and this one uh, wasn't even close second. So, second serve for Roddick Two unsuccessful challenges per set, and another one if they reach a tiebreak. They've already played a very important role in how this event has unfolded this week. A couple of times on key moments, remember the Ginepri Murray match looked like Ginepri had won the first set at 5 4. Murray challenged, won the challenge, then went on to win the first set, which turned out to be huge. <laughs> Here's the old Gonzo. Oh, yeah, Gonzo, Gonzo gets it going now. Nothing gets it going for him better than a couple of huge forehands that he produced in that point. And he has an opening now in Roddick's serve at Love 30. That's a little bit misleading because a lot of times players will just use a challenge at the end of the set, take a shot at it. I'd say it's closer to 50-50 when they use them in, in, a, in a meaningful way. Well, it's been positive in so many ways. First of all, it's directed a lot of calls, sure. which is number one. Number two, it's great for the fans in the stadium. I think it's great. It's always been great for us on television, but now for the fans in the stadium, they get to be part of it. They get to be involved a little bit more. I think it's been total success. This is a tough time of day. The light conditions to call lines. If you talk to the lines people, kind of that twine night, the lights aren't really in effect yet, but the court is shaded. It's not the easiest time to call the lines. Not to mention when you got Roddick hitting serves, you know, 130, 140. That makes it kind of tough, too. Not to make excuses, they ought to get them right. That was 126. And already three aces for Roddick. Four for Gonzo in this match. That's that's the X factor for Roddick in this match. He's loved 30 down, and he can come up with three huge serves to get himself quickly to game point. And, and yet another big serve, handcuffing Gonzalez, and Roddick holds for 4-2. Roddick leads four games to 2-2. Pam is down courtside, and Pam. You were uh, there last night for the Murray match, which is pretty intense. It's a little little different atmosphere tonight, a little more business-like. It's very different in many ways. Also, they started an hour later last night at 8 o'clock. This is starting at 7, and the light is, uh, I think, more tricky starting at 7. The, the, and the proper lights haven't taken hold, and lighting has really changed. I think that's why Gonzo actually dropped his early service game. He lost a ball in the in the stands over here that were still that was still in the sun. So conditions certainly playing a role, but it is packed out here. Great atmosphere. Gonzalez's record this year very good. He did reach the semifinals here back in 02. Roddick netting the forehand after the miss hit from Gonzalez. You can see with his ranking him, Gonzo, a serious threat to make the Tennis Masters Cup mm -hmm. in Shanghai, which you never would have thought the way he started the year.
Roddick, by the way, has a lot of work to do if he's going to make the year-end championships. He's yes. starting in a deep hole here. The injury certainly didn't help the last couple of weeks. So he needs a big tournament here and then a big run at the U.S. Open to give himself a shot. Gonzalez took out his buddy, his teammate in the Olympics. They won the gold medal in the doubles. Nicholas Massou then took out Marty Fish, 5-5, five and five, while Rinka from Switzerland. And then a very comprehensive win over the always tough David Ferrer from Spain last night. Of the four semifinalists, only Roddick had dropped a set in route to it, and that was a tie break, his very first set of the tournament. Mondays, usually the day when you ask yourself, what am I doing with my life? You're saying Jay-Z has one of these? And Sunday was nice, but will I ever be able to feel my thumb again? Temperature still over 90 degrees in Ohio. Andy Roddick got the early break and now serves at 4-3 over Gonzalez in the first set. Thank you, gentlemen. Sir, ladies. Still waiting for some fans to take their seats right behind where Gonzalez is. In the eyesight of Roddick. He's serving now with new balls. Oh, he's got the rhythm going on the serve. Two balls, same story. Monster serve, 136. Roddick, 13 of 14 when he gets that first serve in. How much do you think the serving rhythm and the confidence is tied into the rest of his game? I mean, he seems to be on a, on a serving roll. You know, even the match that was close as Gonzalez has a conversation with Fergus Murphy, and he will challenge. We call on the baseline. And the suspense. It Ooh. did catch the back of the baseline. Barely. Well, Ronick said two overheads so far in this match, and both of them he hasn't tried to hit them. So I'm a little... A little confused about that. A point he had one he should have put away. Had one earlier in the set as well. But yeah, if when Roddick's serving like this, Chris, definitely that gives him confidence. But we've seen we've seen plenty of matches where he's served big and the rest of his game has not been that good. And now I think what we're seeing is the rest of his game, his return game is better. Oh, look at that. And a little soft hands there, net. And a long look. From Roddick at Gonzalez, who scorched the forehand right at him. I almost think, strangely, it could be a little bit of a reversal with Roddick as he's he's playing better from the backcourt. His serve is even better. That's what I meant. I, yeah. What I meant is the confidence he got from the backcourt yeah. created the great rhythm that he's had this oh, week. Oh, for so. sure. Oh, a little off-speed passing shot by Gonzalez. Held it on the racket a long time. And flicks it past Roddick. 14, so that's three straight points where Roddick has served and volleyed. So he came in against Bracelli 18 times, 25 against Vliegen, 21, and a great night against Chela. Not a great number last night against Murray, but he kept coming. He's got to just, just crank this one. Yeah. Oh, I almost fell over. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking at his box and having a little bit of a smirk. Yeah, I'm sure he's saying, what was I doing on those other two? <laughs> Complaining about the uh, sweat because it's so humid out there. It's going to the towel after every point. He likes to go over and have frequent conversations. His brother John, his trainer, Dougie Sprinter, sitting right down there in that corner. And he'll wander over a couple times per game when he's at that end. Gonzalez struggling in this first set. Love 
Mm -hmm. As you said, he's very capable of turning things around dramatically and quickly after a bad set. But Coach Stefanski has not seen his guy play this kind of tennis. No, he's this a, summer. He's he's a little dumbfounded right now. I mean, he would like to at least, you know, hold serve here, make Roddick serve it out so that he could, if nothing else, begin the second set serving. Ooh. Instead, a, a double and then two very bad errors in this game, and Roddick has a pair of set points. That was really flat footed on that forehand there. There's John Roddick on the right, and Doug Spreen, Andy's trainer. And they. Boy, are they has their mood changed this week after that opening round. A solid start from Roddick, and that's been more than good enough as Gonzalez is off. And the crowd favorite. Times I mean, I've seen Rod. He wanted more questions. I, said, I thought I was giving him a break, you know, just trying to take it easy there. Let's give uh, Pam <laughs> a turn to ask questions of Big Brother John. That's right, with John Roddick. And you shed some light on the footwork problem on the overhead when he nearly fell over. What in the world goes on there? About every third week or so, he'll hit a shot and just completely miss the ground. So luckily, he caught a piece of it on the way down and didn't completely fall over. But it's not out of the ordinary. But other than that, it was a pretty smooth first set. It was a good set. I mean, he I think he could have hit the ball a little better, but he played the right way and, and took advantage of, of each opportunity that Fernando gave him. But I think Fernando's going to cut down on some of his errors and, you know, start playing a little better here. A couple days ago, we showed you with a soft cast on your left hand, but obviously everything's just fine in the whole Roddick family. Yeah, we're, we're, we're doing well. We're getting a little lucky on some of the uh, nicks and bruises, but uh, everything's going well. Thanks again, John. Yeah. Thank you, Pam. Clean first set for Roddick, and those numbers are deceptive. Man. Surprised to see Gonzo in plus territory. Yeah, it is, it is surprising. You just you feel like he, as John sort of suggested there, he gave Roddick a lot of points and had some key moments. It's the first set he's lost this week. John also said that he expects Gonzalez to yeah. clean up some of those errors and play a much better That's second really set. And he hopes that his brother realizes that too and avoids the letdown that we sometimes seen from Roddick after rolling to a, a, a dominant set. Will just take his foot off the gas a little bit. Well, well, Roddick should him. know that what a competitor he's playing against tonight because he's played Gonzalez seven times and you know, you'll see Fernando hang his head a little bit and look like he's a little fatigued, but he is. He is a very tough customer out there. Another good second serve there from Roddick, but his first serve has really been effective tonight. 18 of 21. These are all his first serves. Look at the way he's moving it around the box the, the red dots of the aces four for Roddick but he's really spreading it out well all those aces and this the deuce court we're serving right now by the way I like the question that you posed him about blackjack I know Andy's a an avid poker player but on blackjack you don't hit on 16. No. You're not playing the those percentages there. No. no. Unless you're a gambler. Uh, <laughs> I mean that with a, a little G. Right. Very little left to chance. Erotic serve right there. Ace number five, and he holds to begin the second set. If you start hitting on 16, the people at your blackjack table will, will shoot you funny looks. They don't, they don't want you there. Well, I asked James Blake the same question. He said stay. That's the more prudent play. Yes. The more thought, thoughtful guy. <laughs> the question is sometimes, you know, do you stick on 14 or 15, depending on what the dealer is showing? 
Andy will visit the casino from time again when they go to the Australian Open and, and stay right there right. in the Crown Casino. He's been known to take some money and leave some money. Maybe Gonzalo can settle down. If he, if he was rattled by the occasion or the fact that he has the lead in the U.S. Open series points, and you know, maybe that's out of his system after the bad first set. We saw Larry Stefanki with a puzzled expression a couple of times the way his guy was playing in that first set. Yeah, and Larry's also a bit camera shy. He's okay with me going up and getting an update, but he doesn't want to see our cameras around. But he feels that lackadaisical was the first word out of his mouth about Gonzo. Low energy level. Of course, he's played a ton of tennis, but Larry's like, but yeah, this is like one of the biggest matches of your life, so get going. Particularly the footwork. He's very unhappy with Gonzo's footwork. And obviously, if he doesn't get it going, Grotic is on a roll. Well, he'll like that ace that Gonzo just produced for a 40 love lead here. Well, not so much the double. Never out of a game, man. See, here, Andy just saying to himself, you're never out of a game. And that's part of what he knows about Gonzalez. And, and, and the way Gonzalez is playing, he's, he's given some points away pretty quickly here. He does look flat footed. I don't know if the, all the matches sort of caught up to him here. A good aggressive return there from Roddick. You mean the cumulative way Cumulative here. matches from, from last summer. week, yeah. yeah, last week, this week. Made the semis, lost to Federer in the uh, last Saturday up in Canada. Sometimes you play so many matches, Chris, you feel, obviously you feel great, you've got confidence, and then one day you walk out on the court and all of a sudden you realize, man, I'm, I'm kind of tired. You know, it sort of hits you. Gonzalez holds, and it seems like the brain would be the enemy there. I mean, physically you look at it on paper, okay, he's played four matches here, all of them straight sets. He played 24 hours ago you know, here at night. It has been hot, but is it more of a mental fatigue issue? Uh, no, I think it's more physical. I really do. I think when you play a lot of tennis over two weeks and, and you know, even sometimes even a 6-4, six, 6-4 six, four, six, four match, particularly for Gonzalez, let's say he's playing, you know, a Ferrer or someone like that where he's got to work real hard. There's a lot of long points in the heat. It's one of the dynamics of the summer schedule here that it's hard to back up a mm -hmm. good result in Canada and then come here and do the exactly. same. Exactly. Good Richard Gasquet, who had a tremendous week in Canada. He comes here. He made it the final last week. He comes here. He's got to play Robredo first round. He goes out. You know, plays pretty well. Loses five and five. There's so much depth. Even if it's a straight set win, and you look at the score line, and you look, oh, that was an hour and you know 32 minutes. Could be a very physical hour and 32 minutes. You know, I think part of it is also how well Roddick's playing. I mean, that's obvious. Roddick's making Gonzalez have to move quickly. He's not allowing uh, Gonzalez to dictate too many points. Good record for Roddick this year, despite a down year for him when he wins that first set. He's 29 and 4. Once again, Gonzalez just. Flat-footed, didn't he can't, make a move. He can't read the serve at all. No, I mean, he's got no clue. from Roddick who kept the slice very low but Gonzalez flicks that wrist and finds the angle. Well you're right Chris and it's still that's still a well played point for Roddick. When he forced Gonzalez to come up with a great runner and it's 40 love. 
And that's why sometimes the net points even if Ruddick loses them, they're still good plays for him. He's still got the big serve to back it up, and he's still letting his opponent know that anything short, he will look to attack. And oftentimes, that will cause your opponent to make more mistakes. They know, hey, I've, I gotta get the ball deep. Ruddick might be coming in on me. If I'm in the Roddick camp for this one, I like this play. Forcing Gonzalez to come up with another passing shot. Remember, Randy Murray was able to do this last night numerous times. Roddick's still ahead in the score at 40-30. Again, Roddick. A little experimental coming to the net, and then we'll just go back to plan A and bang out ace. No. Mason, Ohio. And it's working out pretty much like the other three so far. Commanding first set against a sluggish Gonzalez who's been trying to get his energy level up. Not business like so far after the fiery effort to beat Murray last night. Again, you know, Gonzalez is trying to go to the Roddick backhand, but Roddick's backhand, he's really hitting it cleanly, getting good depth. And uh, it's not the liability that has been earlier this year. It's enabling him to then go after the forehand. Gonzalez really struggling on his second serve points. Improved returning has been a story for both guys. Gonzalez saying that's one of the main things worked with Stefanki on. Yeah, I think I think it, and, and in two different ways. Gonzalez is being more consistent on the return, getting more in play. Roddick, on the other hand, is Roddick's you gonna challenge us? That looked out. Talking to Fergus Murphy. Your call. He says might as well challenge. Mr. Roddick challenging the call out to left and face. Fergus Murphy was non-committal there. He says, "Your, it's your choice, your call." Nope. Call stands. So Roddick, I think, uh, Chris is looking to be more aggressive on the return, as opposed to just getting it in play. And I think that's that's a better game plan for him. You know, it's interesting how two different kind of. Strategies are better for different kind of players. For Gonzalez, you know, he used to really step around and try to rip forehands consistently. The aggression was never a problem for him. No, and well, now he's gotten a little more consistent, getting more returns in play. Well, there's that aggressive return helped out by a very short second serve from Gonzalez. Yeah, Gonzalez three for 14 on second serve points. Look where Roddick is. Way inside the baseline to take that. Boy, that's a good sign for him. He was halfway between the surface line and the baseline. Gonzalez beginning to hit the forehand with a little more authority holds for two all talked about the American Express Summer of Aces program throughout the entire U.S. Open Series and the Open itself $50 for the American Express card goes to the USTA Tennis and Education Foundation for every ace hit on stadium court the Aces for Kids program helping disadvantaged at risk children 110,350 bucks from American Express. Fifty. Almost another ace. Gonzalez just getting his frame on it. I'll put that as an ace. Another fifty bucks. Rules are rules. <laughs> we like it when Roddick's playing. 
pile up the money for the kids. That's the play I was talking about earlier, Chris. If Roddick would use that, and he's done it a couple of times. That kicker out wide, sneaking in behind it, so keeping Gonzalez guessing. Stefanke knows that this is, uh, this is a huge match, and his guys come out with, without that mentality, really, that it's a huge match. You can give game plans and strategize sessions and all that stuff, but you can't create the fire for the guy. Oh, that's beautiful. I tell you, I mean, it really is really a different guy at net. And watch how quickly he gets in. Look where he hits this first volley from. Way inside the baseline, moving forward. He almost, almost reminded me of Stefan Edberg there. That's high praise. Almost. Oh, Edberg was so good at that, you know, hitting that kick serve, and he would get in so quickly for that first volley. Something Pam has talked about, Andy, a couple times this week, just maybe the light coming on, just becoming a little bit more instinctive kind of reader. Oh, definitely. At the net. And, and when, then, when you go the up range. there a lot more often, yeah. it starts to happen. He's a big guy. He should be able to cover the net. 3-2. Four from Roddick from this week. Yeah, and actually he's standing about 10 feet from me right now. But I, in my view, what I've seen this week, I feel like he's had a tennis epiphany. And then he realizes that up at net is where Andy Roddick is going to make his hay from here on out. We will find out at the U.S. Open if he kind of goes back to his old style of trying to be a baseliner, aggressive baseliner. He cannot win consistently being an aggressive baseliner. He has got to do what he's been doing the last four matches, which is to use his big athletic frame up at net. Therefore, things are coming off his racket that we've never seen before up there. It's been great to watch. But when he is on the baseline, Pam, he does still have to be aggressive, though, right? They both go together, don't okay. they? It's, it's an overall mindset, but I, I think because he's got more confidence up at net, it's it, it's go both ways. It's helping his ground strokes, ground strokes helping his volley. This might be the first time I said this all week, Pam. I agree 100% with you. <laughs> Bless you. Another epiphany. <laughs> My epiphany on Saturday night. It's not a bad deal when you can have an epiphany and then maybe pick up a big check at the end of the week. Yeah. It's a good week if you're Roddick. Well, maybe it's a combination of his brother John or, or Jimmy Connors or, or just his own growth as a player that's caused the light to come on. I know, you know, when Brad Gilbert worked with Andy, it was a source of frustration, the kinds of approach shots he would hit and when he would choose to come in on a point and it didn't feel like he was a, a great coverer of the net. But it seems to be changing this week. You know, it's definitely coming together. And, uh, his brother John talk, talked about that yesterday in the, in the match. That uh, you know Andy's starting to, to understand when to come in, which shots to come in on, and and if you do come in and you get passed in a good situation, If you do get past Chris, as he did in you know a couple of games ago, then that's okay. That doesn't mean you stop doing it. And I think in the past, Roddick would have a tendency to, if he got past a couple of times early on, even if they were good approach shots, he would be hesitant about doing it consistently. If you're going to be a good net player, don't you have to have kind of short-term memory yes. loss? Yes. Forget about it. Exactly. That's a great serve out wide. It's slider. Under 100 miles per hour, but tough to read and very well placed. What a difference in the serve stats for Gonzalez. When he gets the first serve in, he's doing very well, particularly in this set, 10 of 11. But he is really struggling on second serve points. Only won one of six in this set, four of 16 overall. Got to credit Roddick, too. I mean, he's not been known as a great returner, even on an opponent's second serve. So that's changing too. Slaps that one in the net. Gonzalez holds for three all. I mean, if Roddick can win 
80 percent of the points at net which he is is about on that pace tonight and when 71 percent of his opponents second serve points you're going to win every match you win a lot of matches yeah challenge because he only has one left he's that's why he's not challenging here and it was why oh Tonzo, that's a sneaky play he likes to do every now and then but Roddick sensed it coming Gonza really moving to his left to run around a forehand whoops <laughs> <laughs> left the entire middle of the service box unattended Time he leaned into the backhand as he sensed where this one was coming. Beautifully controlled, was able to get on top of the ball. Would you suggest Gonzalez just began gambling, taking some risks? He's not been able to read the serve I, at all by just kind of, he couldn't read that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think he should start to take a few more chances on the second serve, yes. But in terms of moving around and just trying to guess the, the direction of the serve, something Agassi does a lot. He's just not able to to stand there and read the toss very well right now. Well, not many people can read Roddick, sir. That's what part of its strength. You can think of a couple guys, but they're pretty good players. Mm. Backhand up the line. Yet another shot that mom has seen Andy improve this summer. 4-3. Packed house here tonight in Eastern Ohio. This regional tennis hotbed. There are plenty of folks from all around Ohio, but also Michigan and Chicago, Kentucky, Indiana. They come from all over the place here. Yes, I met someone today from Montana, came for this tournament. I met someone from upstate New York near Buffalo. Oh, there's a guy by our set who said he came here from Atlanta. Yeah, it's a very fan friendly place. Obviously, the tickets much cheaper and easier to come by than at the U.S. Open. So if you're an American tennis fan and since he's within striking distance of your or if it's not house, from Montana, no, from yeah. Montana, yeah, well, that's Maybe. striking distance. If you're a fan, right? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Backhand down the line that time on the passing shot. Mm -hmm. This is a, a sense that uh, this match could be over real quick. Another solid point from Roddick. I think he has the same sense that Gonzalez is vulnerable right here. He gets the break. He can serve for this match in a spot in the final. Love 30. Saying that the buzzards are circling above the stadium here. <laughs>
Big shot on the line. Roddick showing he can hit the forehand on the run as well. Gonzalez a look at the spot, contemplated a challenge, decided against it. And Roddick on a roll and a point away from a 5-3 lead. Been really efficient and business like for Roddick tonight. How many first serves has Gonzo hit catching the tape and then skipping out? Change for those guys from that that first match against Bracciali, which was tension filled with so much at stake for Roddick. If he'd crashed out of here in the first round, Gonzalez <laughs> just shattered that racket. He'll need a new one, but he'll also need a new attitude. He's going to check it into the crowd. Oh, gave it to a kid. Guy. That's yeah. nice. Very likable guy, and that's a very happy youngster. Not a very happy Chilean right now. No. The double to surrender his serve again, and now Roddick. A game away from a 2003 U.S. Open final rematch with Juan Carlos Ferrero here tomorrow afternoon. You got to credit Roddick's return, and we've talked about getting to Gonzalez for that double fault. Is Roddick has just been all over Gonzo's second serve all night. Roddick said he got tight when he served for the match last night against Murray. You don't sense the same thing is going to happen tonight, though, do you? Oh, boy, he's been confident tonight. Really confident. You said the word, Chris, businesslike. Not as much emotion as last night, but in a lot of ways, much more effective. His numbers at net are much better. His serve percentage is just downright scary on the first serve points, 28 of 31. This is uh, Roddick from 2003. This is what he did to good players back then, dominate them. A smile from Roddick. There's a uh, wedding reception in the hotel in which Roddick and his family are staying tonight, but I don't think even the bride and groom will be as, as happy as Roddick tonight. He might be the happiest guy in the hotel. That wide serve produces the easy backhand volley. And it is feeling a little bit like 2003, isn't it? You know, I said before the match tonight, Chris, that this was. This was really the, the, the toughest test so far for Roddick. He's had a pretty good draw. Murray was a little tired yesterday, but this, this was Andy Roddick at his best tonight, at his new and improved best, I think. Obviously, long way to go to repeat what he did in 03. But uh, when you see the improvements in his game happening in the match now, that was, that was an excellent performance. Yeah, I just meant the performance and the authority and the kind of the, the, the confidence on the court. We haven't seen this from him in a while. Gonzalez, the solid summer continues, but a disappointing evening tonight. Didn't have nearly enough to get past Roddick. And it will be a rematch of that straight set win by Roddick in 2003 in New York. He called it the biggest win of his life. Ferrero, something of a Renaissance man himself.